Annabea, Lisbeth whispered as loudly as possible without waking the others. Are you sleeping or just lying in wakeful dreaming? The lump in the eider down shifted slightly and a head reared from my bank of pillows. What is it, Lisbeth? Are you ill? No, even better. I'm only going to share this news with you, and then you can make plans about the matter once you hear it all. What are you babbling about, Lisbeth? The hour's late and the temperature dips. It's too cold to be thinking thus in the dark. No, it's not. Listen to me, Annabelle. Open your eyes so I know you listen. For heaven's sake, spit out this crazy news that can't wait till morning. Annabea spoke on the brink of hissing. There is to be a masquerade ball on winter solstice night, just at twilight hour before the big ball begins in Champagne Hall. So, it's called the Mingling Hour, a reception with crystal flutes filled to the brim with pink champagne bubbles, teasing the nose with sparkling tickles till all guests are light-headed and laughing in well-meaning spirits. What's so secret about what you are telling me that can't wait? It's not a holiday dance for us, Annabea. It's a party for the orphans and all children wintering in court. A separate smaller ballroom is to be decorated all in toys and such with dancing music and musicians even. Sweets and stockings for Christmas time. But the best part is this. Lisbeth leaned closer to Annabea's ear and put her hand to Annabea's cheek to steady the woman's gaze to her own and back again for insurance. When Lisbeth was certain she controlled Annabea's unblinking attention, she continued. The little ball is to be a masquerade party, Annabea. Tiny masks for baby faces are already put aside for charming costumes yet to be sewed. Seamstress Penelope told me of all this herself when I was being fitted for my gown. And then she made me swear not to breathe a word about it, as it is to be a surprise for the orphans and all we children wintering here. Do you know what this means, Annabea? Think about what this could mean for ravens. Lisbeth knew when to stop talking once Annabea's eyes grew wide upon hearing such a secret into causing dramatizing expressions to play across the midwife's face. Well, that's it. My news, I mean. All of it. Good night, Annabea. Sleep well. Lisbeth turned away to her pillow and yawned. Annabea lay back upon the pillow and listened to the low gray noise of fine sleep, kissing the window pane, numbing the ambient dissonance of Lisbeth, Kiona, and Constance in deep slumber breathing.